Good evening. It is August 9th, 2020. COVID update, Dr. Noel Williams. So what's the latest? Well, we're approaching uh, 44,000 cases in Oklahoma, 603 deaths. We had 430 some new cases today, 840 some yesterday. Um, so always the lull on Sunday, so we'll have to see what's happening. But I do like the idea that perhaps the 800 to the 400, maybe our, we're getting through our surge. Um, we had about 560 in the hospital Friday. Uh, hopefully we'll again get a little abatement. Uh, the governor did put out a thing last week that was a little confusing that he had to talk to the hospitals about fear mongering and exaggerating their that they're overwhelmed or some such nonsense. The hospitals are quite full. Um, they're not fear mongering. They're just very concerned that if we stay on our present trend, we will overwhelm the hospital systems and we will not be able to handle our patients who are sick in any capacity in terms of the way we're used to being cared for that we all want to receive. So the governor needs to retool a little bit on that uh, situation. And that's always a bummer when he gets reactionary and acts like COVID doesn't exist, but th what can we do? Uh, more on a national level, again, we're well over a thousand deaths a day. We had one day last week with 2,000 deaths. We're just going to have to see what happens in the next few weeks. Schools are opening this week in a variety of places. We'll, again, have to see what happens. If you look at the data, I mean, we should be able to open the schools successfully. My only concern with opening the schools at this point um, comes down to two things. One, our global nutritional status in the United States, which I've mentioned for months and months, and even um, some outside PhDs across the world have started to bring up the sociologic differences that are becoming clear country to country in terms of nutrition, and perhaps that's a big issue here. So if our nutritional status is a lot worse than many other places, is that gonna affect what happens with the schools? We'll have to see. Usually it shouldn't, but we'll just have to check. Um, and then again, there's some schools where they're not going to be doing masks. Again, I think masks are very helpful. Uh, if you don't, I can't uh, help you with that. It's uh, I look at it from a science point of view that if someone's coughing or sneezing into a mask, they're gonna that's gonna be less spread. I think that's pretty well established. And if you have a better mask like a KN95 or an N95, not that I think most teachers could wear an N95 um, all day long because I certainly can't, but I can wear a KN95 all day long. Um, those are gonna be more protective than just a standard cloth mask. So. Again, those are the issues we're going to all be faced with. We'll see what happens. Um, and we just have to go with the science and the actual observed data and not this um, hyperbole of uh, getting very upset. Because like the New York City teachers last week, they had one positive case as they were opening, so they had to shut the whole school system down. COVID is, is not that level of intervention it, in terms of how ill it gets people that with one case you need to shut a million kids out of school but you know we just have to see and we may have to redraw the plan if it looks like lots of people are getting infected then we're starting to see illness in teachers we're going to have to uh, retool and that's that simple so we we need to just get there uh, I'll stop rambling about that other things uh, more data on Plaquenil the again the Yale put out a letter disagreeing with Dr. Uh, Hirsch, or excuse me, Dr. Reich, Harvey Reich from Yale. Um, they, several of the department heads very respectfully said they disagreed and they didn't want everyone to think Yale felt the way Dr. Reich, or Reich did. Um, the big thing with that though is they started by saying in the letter that he is a really an internationally and world renowned cancer epidemiologist and not a uh, virologist epidemiologist let's be clear if you're an internationally renowned anything in science you can transition from cancer to virology to foodborne illness to a lot of things because that's all you read all day long so I think that's an unfair criticism but I think the point being there's lots of opinions on Plaquenil Dr. Reich still feels their their letter had no impact on him he says they're completely wrong but respectfully, they feel he's completely wrong. So we'll just have to see. Study out of Catalonia. 
um, that came out July 31st. I saw this past Friday. They started people on hydroxychloroquine in the first five days of symptoms, and they were all very, they were mild symptoms. It was a double-blinded uh, randomized controlled trial, essentially, and about 250 people in each arm. There was no change in hospitalization for the treated arm versus the untreated arm. I don't have the details of the study. That was a preprint um, report, but it didn't show any benefits. So we'll just have to see what that means. None of the patients got hospitalized in either arm though, from what the little paragraph I could read about the study. So that's a little strange out of 240, 50 patients in each arm, you would have thought at least 10% would have. But um, so that study did not show um, benefit with hydroxychloroquine. Again, something we need to be aware of because again, we're gonna make a scientific decision on hydroxychloroquine. Uh, so that's always what you have to do. So that's a data point. I always wanna be giving the other side uh, that shows negative results that are good studies, and that one looks good so far, um, credit. Uh, our experience again has been very positive. We had someone uh, last week or I put a couple people on it last week and all of them seemed to respond very briskly and turned around very quickly. So is it happenstance? Is it the med? I mean, the data is very confusing. Interestingly enough, um, I had mentioned Invermectin uh, several months ago. That's a dog dewormer. And several people commented like I was an idiot for bringing up dog dewormer, like I don't know how to read a journal article or something. Sorry, I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, I love being criticized by, uh, who, by people who don't even bother to read anything on their own. Um, so Bill Gates has uh, funded a study using Invermectin, uh, Invermectin and Plaquenil together as a outpatient treatment uh, strategy for COVID patients. Very interesting. It's being done in Europe. I don't know when it will be done. Uh, but it could be really cool if that works or if it doesn't work because at least someone said, hey, let's answer the question. Invermectin works one way on viruses. Plaquenil works a different way on viruses. So maybe if we put them together, it seems like they synergize scientifically. But in order to answer the question, you have to do a study. The Gates Foundation has funded the study. Very good news. Again, we need data to figure out an outpatient strategy. So people who are these really awesome infectious disease doctors and critical care doctors and hospitalists only are going to take care of the, the people who are in big trouble and we can prevent maybe some of the people from getting in big trouble. I guess that didn't totally make sense, but you know what I mean. So that's one of the things we're looking at. Um, so we'll just have to see. And that's the update. I don't really have anything else besides that stuff, Kim. There's a few questions, I guess. Yeah, a few questions. Um... Let's see, can too much vitamin D cause inflammation? No, too much vitamin D doesn't cause inflammation, period. <laughs> okay. I don't know what else, no, the answer is no. <laughs> okay, um, should we be wearing eye shields? Okay, so eye shields, face masks, um, you can, I think it's reasonable. Um, I think you're, there is some finite number of cases that are definitely transmitted um, probably into the eyes in a non-medical setting. In a medical setting, it's different because what happens is when someone is getting intubated or being operated on or they're coughing <laughs> at you, um, again, they're projectiling the, the uh, higher concentration of COVID potentially right at your eyes. So in a routine situation, I don't think um, eye shields are that necessary. Again, but if you wanna wear them, it's great. I think it's awesome. I think you definitely are gonna add some protection. I just personally, other than if I'm operating, um, I'm not going to wear one, but that's I just, just not my cup of tea, but I think it's fine to do so. Okay, so some people are getting way sicker than others. Does that ever have to do with the amount of exposure? So the question is, is do people get ill based on their amount of exposure? We, we don't necessarily know that, but there's some models. If we look, especially in China and some of the other countries where they had younger people get infected, there's this, this concept called subversion or immersion subversion meaning you're so you're a younger person you're in a covid unit taking care of covid patient after covid patient after covid patient 
There's tons of COVID around. There's tons and tons of COVID. So you're immersed in it to the point where it, it overwhelms your or subverts your immune system and you can then get much sicker. Now, there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people who get uh, COVID, who work at hospitals, who don't even know they got infected, who are in those same situations. So that's a big, that's an unknown. I'm always going to start with the basics that I think people who are more likely to get sick are the people who are the most nutritionally depleted or have the greatest uh, weight issues. Um, because weight and obesity is really becoming pretty clear to be a huge factor that affects how sick you're going to get and what other secondary illnesses you have. So, and then genetics, uh, if you're a guy versus a girl, but again, girls can get really sick too. So ultimately I think we have to go with there may be, there's going to be viral particles that are more aggressive and are going to reproduce more. We know that already. So if you get a, a worse variant, you're going to get sicker. Uh, if your immune system is worse, you're going to get sicker. If you have other pre-existing conditions, you're going to get sicker. But again, there's going to be occasional people who have, who are young, healthy, and get pretty sick. And that's what we see. But we don't know their nutritional status, and that's what I always get back to. Okay, thank you very much and good night.